What is up everybody? I am Jeff with Timus Design and in today's video we're going to go over what it's like to buy, set up, and use a laser. For me it was pretty intimidating when I ordered this thing because I had no idea what to expect and I didn't see a ton of videos out there. So we're going to dive into all that and if you're interested in buying a laser or starting to set up your laser, this is probably the video for you. So I never really intended to make this video. So I didn't record the unboxing and the crate coming in and all that. Um, I just wasn't really satisfied with any of the videos I saw online. So hopefully this video will help someone out that was in the same shoes as I was. So the crate came in. We managed to get the crate off of the semi with the, just the pallet jack. We got a 100 watt laser. If you get anything bigger than that, you're probably going to need a forklift or a tractor or something to get that off just because the box is so big. And then once we got the box into our shop, we just kind of tore the box apart and just slowly started piecing things to, like pieces off of the pallet. And then there was a bunch of foam around the laser and we just kind of took it all up, out and just three of us kind of got it off of the pallet and then pushed it into the designated area. Overall, it wasn't bad. It was just more so time consuming, us taking our time trying not to damage anything because we didn't really know anything about lasers at that point. So now with your laser is in a designated area, kind of just take inventory of what you have. Most of the larger lasers don't come with the tube installed, so we're going to have to install the laser tube. It should also come with a chiller. Some of the lower end machines may not come with these items, but I highly recommend a chiller. And then also it should come with some sort of extraction fan and then miscellaneous hoses and an air pump. So for me, this is the most intimidating task because this Reese tube is very expensive. Machines come with different types of tubes. This one, for instance, is a Reese tube, and I think this tube alone is like $2,000. So take extreme caution when you're installing these laser tubes because if you drop it, you're gonna have a real bad day. I actually just did a quick look on Amazon and a new replacement tube is $1,060. So not quite 2,000, but still be careful. So now we're gonna dive into just prepping this area. There's some like silica packets to keep everything dry and just some zip ties. So we're just removing all that before we start installing this tube. Then I'm just gonna remove the top mounting brackets completely. These just have some random Allen wrench that came with the machine. So I'm just gonna take those off so we can set the tube in nice and easy. So I chose to wear gloves here. I'm not sure if you have to, it just seemed like the safe route to go. And then I just gently placed the tube in there. The tube had mounting bracket suggested area stickers on it. So I just lined it up roughly with that. And then we'll do the final adjustments once it's in there. And this process should be pretty much the same for any laser, but always check your manual. Laguna's manual stated about an inch and three quarters or two finger widths apart. Mounting brackets have these little rubber feet on them. So when you slide it, just be aware if it's trying to grab, just give it a little lift and slide it gently. And then just go ahead and start clamping everything down, but don't over tighten it. I just kind of snugged everything up so it just felt secure, but you don't want to crack or over tighten the tube. So now we're just going to take this cap off and we're going to attach a hose to the bottom and then this other hose has just a wire in it and we're going to attach that with a small screwdriver. Then we're going to essentially do the same thing for the other side. Just take out this small screw and attach the wire that lays below it. And then you're going to go ahead and attach the tube that is next to it as well. The two wires are for electricity purposes and then the two hollow tubes are for the water that will chill your laser. And that is it. The hardest part is complete. Attach a wire to each end and then add the tubes for cooling. So now that I got the laser tube installed, I just went around and make sure I got all the zip ties cut along with finding any other miscellaneous items inside the laser. There was a few hoses and stuff in the bottom of the laser, so I took all that out and just double checked everything before I moved on to the next step. And then the Laguna laser has a motorized bed, so you may not even have all these motors and wires down here like I do. So it's been about four to six weeks. As I started assembling this thing, I realized I had no idea what I was doing and I really wanted a better understanding of how everything worked before I tried to help you guys out. I've cut a bunch of stuff. I've been running it for a while and I have a pretty good understanding of how it all operates. So we're gonna pick up where we left off. And this is the chiller. The chiller is super easy to install. I see a lot of people running a 5200 model. I don't know the difference between the two, but this is the chiller that came with this Laguna laser but most of the chillers look pretty much identical to this. They're just a different color. So we're gonna show you guys how we set up that. And what the chiller does is it keeps your laser CO2 laser tube cool as it's creating laser beams. And this is the back of the chiller. Again, yours might be a different color, but for the most part, it should look relatively similar. It has an inlet hose, an outlet hose, and an alarm wire. The alarm wire simply tells you that your 
water level of your box is getting low. It holds about two gallons of water. Well, this one does anyways. And then it just mounts right back in here, which everything's labeled, so it should be easy to install. There's other hoses for air assist, which you'll see in a little bit. So now onto the extraction fan and the little compressor. So the little compressor adds air to your laser cutter to help cut through items and stuff like that. The Laguna came with a little, it seems like a giant fish tank pump, but some people do upgrade these to like the California Air Quiet air compressors to get more oomph out of their system. But I've been using it for a while now and for what I do now, that one that came with it is just fine. I don't, I don't plan on upgrading that anytime soon. And then with the blower, I did upgrade. And in the manual that Laguna provided, they say they don't recommend you upgrading your stuff because that's the stuff they decided was best for the machine. So do all that at your own risk. The blower that comes with it is very big. It's very loud. So I decided to go with the AC Infinity fan. That was $100 on Amazon. I'll link that down below. And then I just vented it straight outside. I'm in a rural area, so I don't really gotta worry about the smoke or anything affecting anybody. It's just, I don't really have any neighbors. So it just, I vented it straight outside. And this is the fan that came with it. It's just quite large and loud. And as you'll see, the one I replaced it with is smaller and a lot quieter. And then I just cut a hole in the side of the building and shot it straight outside. So that's also something you need to be aware of. You're going to need to vent this thing somehow. You can buy some makeup air unit extractors that are expensive and take up a lot of space. Most likely you have to vent yours outside too. And now into the air assist. Again, I don't really have any interest in upgrading this anytime soon, maybe in the future, but it just plugs into the back over there by the other hoses. Real simple to install. And now onto the mirrors. You may get lucky and your mirrors may be perfectly aligned. I was not lucky and I had to make a small adjustment, but they were pretty close. The laser tube shoots out a laser beam and bounces it off these mirrors and directs it to the laser beam head. And then you just need to make sure they're lined up so it does that correctly. And then I just did a quick alignment test in the back left of the machine and then the front right of the machine. I'm not going to go too deep into that just because that's kind of a process itself, but it took me about a half hour. Getting the mirrors aligned may be the hardest part to understand just because you got to shift them around, but once you get it, it should go pretty quick. And you essentially do test fires and try to get these little burn marks to line up perfectly with each mirror. And then all you do is turn your laser on, and once your laser fires up, you just move it to the corresponding spot, and you just hit this little pulse button down here, and just set your laser power to about 15%. I had mine set too low and it would not fire. I actually had to call customer service because I thought it was something was messed up, but it was just my ignorance, which is also a bonus for any higher end machine. The lower end machines may not have customer service. Final assembly step, lower these feet all the way down so the wheels are just a little bit off the ground so this thing doesn't shift around at all. So now that your mirrors are aligned, your chiller works, you have it full of about two gallons of water, your air assist turns on and your fume extraction or smoke extraction is pushing all your smoke and fumes outside or into an extraction unit, you're pretty much ready to go. Getting your mirror set up and getting the laser tube installed are the most time consuming parts of this whole thing, but overall those four or five things are pretty much it. So now we're gonna show you guys how to get the laser up and running. I've just been using this USB that comes out of the bottom of the machine. This machine does have Wi-Fi, but I just haven't had time to figure all that out yet. All right, my friends, this is Lightburn. This is what I believe most people use. So we're going to show you guys how to do this. We're going to first import a file. We're going to engrave out some cork. I haven't done cork yet, so let's see how that goes. My piece of cork is circle, so I'm just going to use this simple shape to help with alignment later. You'll see what I'm going to do in a little bit. So the most daunting part was figuring out what, like what numbers to run for all these materials. And if you go to Laguna's website here, they have it in a weird spot. It's actually down in here, which you'd think it'd be like in the manual, but they do have a simplified version in the manual. But I just go in here and kind of go off of these. I actually don't see cork in here. So let's see what, so cardboard, okay. Cardboard's 20 at 350. So then you just simply go over here, speed, which is how fast the machine goes, 350. Power, we'll just do 25%. And then we'll just do a fill. Okay, I just double checked and my cork is seven inches. Okay, so let's go load, load this in the machine. 
then you just turn on the key to fire this thing up and then just give it a minute to kind of run through its homing cycle and then you're ready to place the piece in there. Okay, so we are just guessing on these numbers here. So this little indicator icon will change where the laser goes. Okay, and I just set my origin. And then you can do this frame feature. Then we'll just do this multiple times until it looks right to me. And all that's happening here is I selected the circle and then push the frame button and the frame button just follows that outline of that shape. Real simple. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete the circle. I just simply use that for alignment. Turn my chiller and everything on. Then you can go up here and do preview. 14 minutes for this. Whew. So there are multiple ways to get this down. Since this is cork, I'll go a little faster because I have no idea. Let's check out these. You can change, you can mess with all the stuff later, but 17 minutes, so that was not the answer. 14. And all you do is push start. And since this is my first time etching any type of cork, I just make notes in my phone and then you just adjust them slightly with each new test. And then you'll see here in a minute, I did a few runs of this and then the last one actually looked pretty good. I think it ended up at 420 speed at 20 power. I might slow it down a little bit on the next one, but they all still look pretty good. SVG. So you can run multiple file types, PNGs work. I just like SVGs because they are just easy to use. So for wood, I do 30% and then 400 power. They usually look pretty good. Dump this down a little bit. One more time. And then the actual speed of this was about 2 minutes and 20 seconds, I believe. Alright guys, so that is it. Just kind of skim through everything to make it as easily digestible as possible. I didn't want to make it too long and boring. And then I'll close it out with a couple thoughts on the laser and then some Q&A. All right, so let's jump into a little bit about the laser. The laser is a 100 watt Smart Shop MX laser by Laguna. It cuts 24 by 36. And I think this is a great option for anyone interested in a higher end laser. They do make cheaper lasers out there, but when you're paying that premium price, you're getting better parts. Also, the biggest thing to me was customer service and parts. I just didn't want to buy a lower end laser, have some issues, then I got to hodgepodge some parts together to make this thing work if something goes wrong. So that is the main reason I went with the higher end laser. There's plenty out there, but I trust Laguna, so that's why I went with this laser. This thing has QC stickers all over it, so you can see they meticulously went through this thing. Um, I really had no issues with it. The setup was pretty easy. Highly recommend this laser if you're in the market for a higher end laser. My only complaint, well not even a complaint, my only suggestion would be some way to incorporate like the chiller or the air pump or something inside of the laser. That's just something I didn't expect to have to kind of deal with. I just kind of thought that was all part of the laser. But again, I was just ignorant and had no idea. So the chiller, the blower, and the air pump go all outside of the laser. Also online, it states that the machine is 54 by 54. It's actually like 54 by 64 because of the extension that comes off for the laser tube. So that's also something I wish I was aware of. Luckily, I had the space, so it's not that big a deal. But if you're trying to fit this in a small spot, it might be an issue. It also has Wi-Fi. I haven't dove into the whole Wi-Fi thing yet. I will try that out soon. I just haven't had issues. Also, I've just been plugging it in. There's also a USB port where you can just upload code manually. So that's pretty much it. I'm very happy with my experience so far, and I would recommend this to somebody else. See if she figures out now. Is it clear now? It's so hard to tell with this little screen. But if you guys made it this far in the video, I appreciate every one of you. Um, it, a lot goes into these videos. They're, they take a while to make. So if you made it this far in the video and uh, you comment first that you want this mallet, I will send you this mallet free of charge. I'll sand it up and oil it real nice. This is one of the ones I made on the CNC with the old Two Moose logo on it. So if you want this mallet, 
First to comment gets it, free of charge, send it right to you. So let's dive into some questions. Hopefully I'm in focus now. Question number one by Nick's Lakeside Woodworking. Laser versus CNC, why? I'm in the market for either a bigger one, bigger CNC or laser. So that's super hard to answer just because it depends what your business is. Because if you're making a bunch of certain items that won't really help you with a laser, it won't be beneficial to buy a laser. One of the big things is if I'm gonna buy a laser, I'm gonna buy a good one. So I ought to spend at least $5,000 on one versus an entry level like Shape Oko or Onefinity is like $3,000. So that's also something to pay attention to. Um, if I were to start all over and didn't know anything about either one, I would probably buy a laser just because it's more versatile. With the CNC, there's a lot more to learn and like you gotta clamp stuff down and there's a bunch of bits to learn and just I think a laser is more expensive but it's an easier, more versatile item to figure out. What kind of programs or files running laser? Uh, so I run Lightburn. Laguna recommended Lightburn along with multiple, multiple buddies that also run lasers. They also use Lightburn. So I think Lightburn's a great choice. It's, I think it's like 120 bucks for a lifetime use, which is amazing compared to other softwares. And for files, I use SVGs, but I make most of my own files. But you can run PNGs and like JPEGs, but they just run in like a different format. But as long as it's a clear file, it doesn't really matter. Did you upgrade your power source to run it? No, I run it on two 20 amp 110 circuits. You could probably run it on one. I just do the laser on its own and the accessories on the other just to be safe. But you don't need any sort of crazy power upgrades to run a laser. But with your talents, have you ever think of teaching classes? Uh, in my current location, no. When we move and hopefully have a bigger shop, I would love to do some sort of in-course like CNC classes or just like small building projects. I think that'd be amazing. It's super fun to have work hands-on with other makers. Um, we are planning on doing like a teachable course with CNCs, maybe one with lasers. We'll see how the whole laser thing plays out. But with the CNCs, we're gonna start from like what bits, like what all the bits do to how to use the bits to no knowledge to knowledge and getting a CNC up and running. And that'll be like less than $100. It won't be anything crazy but that is up the pipeline. I will make that teachable course soon. I don't know when I'm gonna to get to it. Cost of unit, unit was $9,000. I did get a deal from Laguna because I helped promote their products and I've been working with them for a little while now. So $9,000 new, I think I paid like $6,000, but I have to make videos and promote how I feel about the, or like share how I feel about the product and stuff like that. Did you have to align the mirrors? Yes, my mirrors were a little bit off. I would just assume your mirrors are off. I almost feel better that my mirrors were off because now I understand how the mirrors work and how to adjust them. I think with the phone call that I had to call customer support, I think it was about an hour total before I had everything lined up and ready to start firing laser beams. I had, when I was aligning my mirrors, I didn't have my power set high enough, so my, my laser tube was firing weird, but it was just my fault and I had the, the power set too low to actually test it. So I was probably a five minute phone call and they helped me out real quick. What's the thickest wood it can cut through? I don't know. Um, I've cut through 3 a thick walnut. I don't really plan on cutting through a bunch of thick material with it anyway. So as long as it can cut through like quarter inch stuff, I'm more than happy. Is it easy to use? I think it's far easier to use and understand and learn than a CNC. Also keep in mind, I'm pretty efficient in multiple softwares. I know all the Adobe products. I know Vetric, I know Easel. There's, so, that's also a leg up for me because I already understand a bunch of them design type softwares. So keep that in mind, but I didn't think it was too bad. I had to figure out and cutting in 15 minutes for the software. I mean, I don't understand the entire realm of the software, but enough to get it pew pew in. How did you decide brand size, first project, few mix action, what to avoid setups? So I went with Laguna because I like and trust Laguna products. We've also been work with, working with them for a little bit now. I, the first item I bought of theirs was the Laguna C-Flux 3 dust collector, which is still running strong three years now. Um, I also have the Supermax drum sander. I got, I just got the new planer from them, which is great. I just, I'm comfortable paying more of a premium to get more of a premium product because if I ever need parts or customer service, I know I can get that help versus the cheaper lower end items. You may not get any of that. And that is all I have guys. I appreciate all you. I pretty much make these videos for fun at this point. Um, I hope you can take as much from them as you can. If you have any questions or any future video ideas, just leave them in the comments and I'll, I try to answer every single question. Go follow us on Instagram, like it, 
share it, do all that good stuff. I hope you all have a wonderful day.